I've put together a set of questions. This is what's called self-interview. The subject matter is what is obvious in business many times is overlooked. I think we forget the obvious and we try to be ingenious about things when the obvious is the way to go. Question number one. What role does customer centricity play in Thompson Ferrier and how do we keep this front and center in every decision that we make? And I think you know that by now that customer centricity is the key of every decision that you make or I make. What is the question of the customer centricity? For us, it's, is it a net positive to the customer experience? That's my question. My design, product, fragrance, customer service, every contact that we have. The, the issue always becomes, majority of brands chase sales. So customer centricity, it's obvious, but how? For us, the how is we ask this question and we make a decision when we're gonna launch something. Is the customer experience going to be a net positive? That's question number one. Question number two, how important is storytelling in building a brand? And why do we believe it's necessary to be consistent with it? Storytelling is very revealing of some of the intricacies of a business that is normally not available to the general public. It might be obvious to us, but it's not obvious to you the how everything is made. So we should tell a story. We should tell our challenges. We should tell our failures. We should discuss things that are going around us. What's the obvious part? Tell your story. It sounds obvious, but most people don't do it. Storytelling is a very important part of building a relationship. When somebody connects with you is when they begin to think about bringing you and inviting you into their home. Question three, what does quality mean to you beyond just the product itself and how do you ensure it's experienced in every touch point? What's obvious is quality, everyone throws it around. You have to remember quality is experienced in the hands of the consumer at home, not what we as brands say. From the website, from the product, the way it's packaged to the customer, from the opening of the box, from the way it feels. Quality is not just the product. A customer is a human being at the end of the day. Quality is partly product, partly the way it behaves in the consumer's home, and many, many other things which are not necessarily just product driven, it's relationship driven. Number four, how do you view the balance between being innovative versus staying true to what your brand is known for? All brands need to be innovative at all times, but it has to live within the criteria of your DNA. Now, does it meet the requirement of the product? Does it meet the requirement of the performance in the person's house? For example, if it's a fragrance, we wanna live in the fringe, meaning doing something extravagant, but does it still meet the following requirement? And what's this obvious following requirement? Remember, a customer has repetitive experience with you. They want to be sure that when they buy something they have never tried with you, that the history says they are gonna be happy. But you have to build that trust first. So innovation is a great thing. Why is it so crucial for luxury brand like Thompson Ferrier to understand quiet luxury? And how does that influence my marketing decisions? First of all, what is quiet luxury? I'm gonna define quiet luxury by defining the opposite. When you plaster a brand name on a product, and you put Gucci, Louis Vuitton, or whatever, the brand is all over the place, that is not quiet luxury. Quiet luxury, the brand is silent, not visible, without screaming the name of the brand everywhere. Right now, we don't have any branding on this. You see this? It enhances the environment by adding value silently. Sometimes like clothes even, right? You don't want the brand here. You don't want it plastered everywhere. You want to know that you're dressed in something beautiful. In this case, for example, there's something obvious about this. The quality is defined. Quiet luxury is inherent in the product, not because it says the brand name. Next question. In what ways have you intentionally crafted online customer experience to, to leave a lasting impression? Well, think about it. The toughest place you can create a relationship is online. If you're in store, it's very different. How do you manage expectation online? 
So for us, it's always photography. Managing expectation is a very important part of not disappointing a customer by way of letting them know what to expect. What's the size? What's the emotion? How big is this thing? How can you put it on top of a desk? How is it related to the other items in your home? So managing expectation is a very important part. So we take beautiful pictures. That's number one. Number two, when we're explaining a fragrance online, we are using words that are commonly understood. We all know what vanilla smells like. Online is you have to manage expectation so that when they're buying something, even though it's not exactly what they think they're gonna get because they don't know exactly what tobacco, vanilla, leather, and ash might go together, how does that's gonna smell like, but they have an idea. The next question is, in what obvious business advice do I have that I believe everyone knows but rarely implements? People forget that time is your friend and can be your enemy. Results are gonna come very far in the future, but I'm gonna act massively every single day. Your foot's gotta be on the pedal every day looking for small, small, small incremental gains on a day-to-day -day basis. Even when you make a decision to go backwards, that's a positive decision for the long game. This is not tomorrow game. This is a very, very far in the future game. So you've gotta be in it with unbelievable execution day to day with not much expectation because the results come later. Next question. Why do you think brand aesthetics are essential in luxury market and how do I maintain them consistently across all channels? Communication is a very big part of brand identity. Even if you're not in marketing, when you see a quality product, there's something in you that you say, this is a quality product. Sometimes you might not know why you feel that way, but you know what it is. The Zabrano, for instance. You know that you're looking at something that has taken immense amount of work. You don't know how it's made. You don't know what the process is. You have no idea what the components are, but yet you have a feeling. If you're elevated, you have to speak, look, and feel that way. How does building a personal connection with customers play a role in creating long-term loyalty for Thompson Ferrier? I can't stress this enough. What's obvious here for me is ego must get out of the way. I know there are brands out there that has no human that's associated with them, but majority, there's a human associated with a brand. A personal connection is very important. We all look at Steve Jobs and identify with Apple. We look at Elon Musk and identify with Tesla. We look at, for example, for Tom Ford, we identify him with Tom Ford. So many brands, there has to be a human because ultimately products come and go. We humans can read more of our body language between the two of us than we can read the words that we're saying. Body language, connectivity, tonality, um, honesty, transparency. These are all things that are inherent when you deal with people. Trust. That is how you develop trust. What one obvious piece of advice would you give to aspiring entrepreneurs about the in importance of staying authentic in their brand? Document, document, document. This is obvious, but most people don't do it. Why? Because they speak to themselves and they say, I'm shy. I don't like to be in front of a camera. I don't know how to speak well. It's okay. Whoever you are, you're going to be loved for that reason. You are who you are. I am who I am. Whatever mistakes and awkwardness I have and accent and this, the one obvious piece of advice I have is document, document, document and broadcast, broadcast, broadcast. We are so fortunate to have free of charge TikTok, Instagram, YouTube, Pinterest, Google, uh, LinkedIn, X, so many ways to broadcast our voice, yet we don't do it. In the old days, you would pay tens of millions of dollars to make one video. Cameraman, this, that, now, what do you have? You have a phone and you have many channels to broadcast. Now, a little bit more obscure questions. What one decision in your business that felt entirely counterintuitive at first but ultimately became foundational. This is a very difficult one I'm asking myself. Counterintuitive for me was, honestly, the quiet luxury was the one. 
the, the, the issue is you always look around and you look at other people and you begin to say, I must follow the norm. No, you don't. You don't have to follow the norm. I didn't. I made a decision, no branding. When you take my candle and you put it in your home, there is no branding on this candle, none whatsoever. Nowhere does it say Thompson Ferrier. It's got to come through with the architecture. The intuitive thing is people follow trends. I have made a decision never, ever to follow a trend. Consistency is what I go by. Next question. If you could remove one element from your business that everyone else insists is essential, what would it be and why? Ooh, I remember the day when I felt this was the Bubble Crush collection. Beautiful collection, very vibrant. And I made a decision that I am not going to continue with this collection. Everyone insisted that I should. They said it was an essential part of my business. And I said, no, it's not. Even though it was huge success, huge money maker, it wasn't on brand. You have to let go of things that, that don't fit. Next question. What's a small daily habit or routine you follow that keeps your brand aligned with a purpose? I think financial health is a very important part of brand building. I believe that understanding the difference between cash flow, inventory, accumulation, long-term debt, recurring expenses, gross profit, you have to know these accounting terms. So the little things that you do is, Every day you pay a little bills, every day you put a little money aside, making sure your taxes are, all the little things. Next question. What would you say is the biggest myth about luxury brands and how does Thompson Ferrier break it? That one is really not obvious. I believe to truly be a luxury brand, you first have to understand what luxury is, right? It's not in the price. It's not in one thing. It's in every little piece of the brand that has to be pushed up and elevated. When was the last time you listened to a customer feedback and s that seemed trivial yet led to a major change? One of the things that I do is I, I actually stay quiet when a customer is talking. What I do is I try to say to myself, what exactly is the customer trying to say to me? For example, we had gift cards. Customer said to me one day, Rafi, I love your gift cards, but it's an e-card. How am I going to give this as a gift, as a stocking stuffer? What am I going to give them? A piece of paper? I understand, Rafi, if I'm going to give a gift to send it by email. I get it. It's great. But what if I got to put it as a stocking stuffer? What if I'm going to somebody's house and I, I want to give a gift? This came about. A titanium gift card that is so beautifully executed that the customer can take to their friend to give as a gift. That's what happens when you actually listen to the customer. This is a very good question. What is a harsh truth about running a luxury brand that doesn't get talked about a lot? Number one, when you're building a luxury brand, you have to expect not everyone is going to talk about it. Not everyone, number one, is into the luxury items. And you have to break into that world. And when you do do it little by little by little, it takes a very long time to be talked about. And then I always say, there is no such thing as arrival. There's no arrival date. There's no end date for anything. So they're not going to talk about you. So you have to expect that. Do you have the staying power mentally, physically? You have the tenacity and the financial wherewithal to say, this is not going to happen today. I don't know when it's going to happen. It's going to happen. Just got to keep doing what I'm doing over and over and over again. That's the harsh truth. One more question and that's it. What one principle do you think every entrepreneur should adopt but rarely do? There's something about habit forming. And I believe that habit forming is an integral part of the staying power when it comes to business. Habits are what make a business. Habits create consistency. You have to be in the habit of posting. You have to be in the habit of paying your bills. You have to be in the habit of asking the customer. You have to be in the habit of attending to the customer. You have to be in the habit of being innovative. Those habits are obvious. It's all obvious. We all know what to do. We just don't do it. 
but it's in the compounding of this obvious plus that obvious plus that obvious is what makes greatness. On that note, I love you guys. I hope this was helpful.